Hi. <clears throat> this is a strange thing, isn't it? Grace Bible Church service on our streaming devices. It's very sweet and good to be able to watch these from our homes. Um, in our house on Sunday, we quietly sing while the TV plays in the background. We're not getting the experience of hearing other people drown our terrible voices out. Um, I do love to hear the NGM lesson the way that we're doing it right now. And I'm really encouraged to see Smed back preaching from his study. However, I miss you all. I miss seeing everyone walk through those giant tall doors with my cup of coffee in hand. I miss saying hi to many of you, as many as I possibly can. I miss teaching your kids in the kindergarten class. Yes, there are many sweet things that we can get in this experience right now, but some of my favorite things are not happening right now. I miss the fellowship with you guys. I miss the fellowship that God has given us in saving us into a body of believers. I wanna be content right now, but it's a struggle. I wanna be content with the form of worship that God's given us, but I have to shepherd my heart there. Contentment would not exist if it wasn't for proper heart shepherding. And regardless of the circumstance in my life, contentment's been a struggle. So I've taught myself how to battle it. And the only tool I know how to use to battle discontentedness is the Bible. And specifically for me, I love to go to the Psalms. It is helpful for me to see David's heart on display, to see his honesty, his laments, his heart shepherding, and his praise for God. I need the beautiful picture of God and his attributes that this book puts on display. I've been doing that a lot lately. And when I recently read the Psalm that we'll be looking at this morning, it caught my attention. I think because of the way it opens. It opens with such familiar words, and you'll see that in a sec. Actually, let's open our Bibles right now to Psalm 22. And if you don't have a Bible, go ahead and grab your phone, download a Bible app, pull up a browser, Google Psalm 22 in ASB, and you'll be able to follow along. The Psalm was written by David and is quoted so much in the New Testament. It's actually quoted so much that some commentators have called it the fifth gospel. And so I want to read some experts, excerpts from it for you guys and give you guys four ways to shepherd your heart towards contentment from Psalm 22. Let me read the beginning. Psalm 22. For the choir director, a Psalm of David. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Far from my deliverance are the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I have no rest. Yet you are holy. O oh, you who are enthroned upon the praises of Israel, in you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were delivered. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. So we're looking at four ways to shepherd our hearts towards contentment. And the first one comes out of these five verses. It's God is trustworthy. We know God is trustworthy. And when we think of that God is far, we can trust that we're wrong. David starts this by saying, my God, my God, where have, why have you forsaken me? He feels like God is far. And then he reminds himself that God is holy and that God is trustworthy. We know he's near because he's proven himself to be near and he's trustworthy. David reminded himself of, his trustworthy, of God's trustworthiness through what God did with Israel we can look through all of scripture and see that God has time and time again proven himself to be trustworthy. The second kind of obvious point of this is we need to know our Bibles. We need to know your Bible, know your God, and then remind yourself of what you know. Let's jump down to verse eight and look at the second way to shepherd our heart towards contentment. Commit yourself to Yahweh. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, because he delights in him. The second way to shepherd our heart towards contentment may be a little obvious. Commit yourself to Yahweh. He will deliver you. He will rescue you. He delights in you. But we need to be committed to him. The world wants to distract us from this, and we need to bring our hearts back here. What does it mean to commit yourself to Yahweh? It means to live wholly for him. I started 
by mentioning a way that I can fall back into discontentedness. I miss good, godly things that God has given me. Discontentment can be subtle and can fool us into thinking we're focused on the right things. But if you find yourself longing for anything other than God, you have not wholly committed yourself to Yahweh. Next, let's look at verses 19 and 24 to find the third way to shepherd our hearts towards contentment. I'm going to change the pronouns in these verses to help us connect them. In between these verses, there's a transition of pronouns, and it makes it tricky to understand when you parallel them the way I'm going to do it. And so I'm going to take verse 24 and use the same pronouns as in 19. Um, It'll make sense when I read it. But you, O Yahweh, be not far off. O you, my help, hasten to my assistance. And then David will change from lament to praise and remind himself of truths about Yahweh in verse 24. For you, O Yahweh, have not despised nor bored the affliction of the afflicted. That's me. Nor have you hidden your face from me. But when I cried for you, when I cried to you for help, you heard. Jacob taught us this truth a couple of years ago, right? When he preached about how Yahweh is near, God is near. Yahweh isn't just an observer. Yahweh is near and Yahweh is helping. If we look back at verse one, we see that David started this psalm like feeling like Yahweh had forsaken him. He gets here and asks God to be near and to help him. And then when he transitions from lament to praise, he gives thanksgiving for how Yahweh is near. Yahweh is near. We may feel far from God at times, but the truth is we're the ones that are wrong. Yahweh is near. This leads me to the fourth way we can shepherd our heart towards contentment from Psalm 22, and it's not in this passage. It's Jesus on the cross when he quoted this verse. This is the most desperate cry in all of human history. In Psalm 26, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was begging God to remove the cup from him, the cup of wrath. Jesus knew that God would pour out his wrath on Jesus at the cross. And Jesus knew the purpose of this was so that he could be the substitute for our punishment that we deserved. Then, when, then many believe that at the moment in, in chapter 27 of Matthew, when Jesus cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was bearing that wrath that we deserved. We can shepherd our heart towards contentment because we know that the worst thing that can happen to us was taken from us by Jesus at that moment. This may not be an ideal situation for us, but if we're looking at the world correctly, we know we're in a pretty good place. We may feel at times like David that God has forsaken us, but Christian, you're flat out wrong. God is near because he forsook his son on the cross in that moment. There's another group listening or watching. Some of you have not put your faith in Jesus. Maybe you're watching because you have always been a part of a church and you feel comfortable watching. Maybe you're just curious about the YouTube or Facebook watch party that's happening right now. I want you to listen to this next part very closely. This passage should not be a comfort to you because you are still opposed to God. The truth should mean so much more to you because you need to put these in practice, not just to comfort yourself through this tough time, but to be saved. Number one, God is trustworthy. You need to trust God to save you from your sins. Number two, commit yourself to Yahweh. He will deliver you. Number three, Yahweh is near. Believe that, trust that. And number four, you need to recognize that Jesus went to the cross as the sin bearer. If you don't trust in him to save you from the Father's wrath, then one day you'll feel the wrath just like Jesus did. You'll cry out, my God, my God, what, why have you forsaken me? And God will answer, because you forsook me. Today is the day of salvation. Repent and believe that Jesus went to the cross for your sins.